Hello friends, vinyl community, music lovers, welcome to episode 87 of The Vinyl Survivor. This is where I talk about albums that I pulled from my inbox or new purchases, uh, things that I've listened to recently, give you a bit of info on each one, let you know what I thought of each one, and let you know whether they're going to be something that's going to be staying in my permanent collection or going away. So let's go ahead and get into this. First album we have here is the eighth studio album from the band Kraftwerk from 1981. This is Computer World. A very well-known, well-sampled album of theirs. Uh, I, I grew up listening to this without even knowing it, be, being that I listened to a lot of hip-hop growing up. Just every, everything on here has been sampled to death, basically. I'm sure if you went on whosampled.com and, and typed in some of these songs, it, the list would just go on and on and on. So it's a very, definitely a much more rhythmic, almost dancey album from Kraftwerk. Uh, very, very rhythmic and and hip-hop sounding. I mean, a, a lot of the hip-hop songs that sampled this basically just completely ripped it off. Was lazy and just ripped it off. Anyway, uh, really cool album, cool tracks, having to do with moving into the, the personal computer sort of era uh, where you know, computers weren't these big machines anymore. They were things that people could have in their homes. And really cool album. Uh, like I like Kraftwerk a lot. This is, an a, basically it's a bootleg. It's an Australian pressing from 2005 that is unofficial. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. I bought this in Orlando at uh, Rock and Roll Records. I believe it's what it's called. Uh, did not know that this was basically a bootleg uh, wasn't real expensive it was like sixteen dollars but yeah that's that's disappointing that it's not a it's not an official pressing I'm, I'm kind of upset about that but what can you do just disappointing uh, this is the orange pressing they did all kinds of colors of these for this this Australian pressing there's there's yellow and blue and clear and there's a glow-in-the-dark one lots of different colors Sounds okay. I'm guessing it was probably from a CD though or something. So yeah, a little disappointed, but it's cool to have this on vinyl anyway. And I didn't spend a whole lot of money on it at least, but it sucks. You know, sometimes you see records in the record stores and they're clearly bootlegs and this is not, and it's, it's well done. The, 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 uh, the graphics and everything look really nice and sharp and uh, there was no nothing on there to tell me that this was a bootleg, but yeah. So Craftworks Computer World, cool album, something uh, I've, I've listened to a lot without even knowing it, listening to a lot of hip hop, uh, but a good album uh, by itself and definitely a more modern sounding Kraftwerk. So uh, enjoyed this one anyway, nonetheless. All right, moving into some more uh, jazz fusion y type stuff, we have Stomu Yamashita's Go 2 from 1977 on Arista Records. This also features uh, Aldi Miola and Klaus Schulz on, on synth work and just awesome work by Klaus Schulz. I'm, and you, you know, if you follow me, I'm big into the synth stuff and uh, he's just killer on here, just totally rocking out with it. It's just, uh, this is a really cool album. And it was sort of a, Stomu Yamashita's go-to was sort of a very short-lived project. This is their second and last album. There's all the players liner notes on there. There's the label on Arista, sort of light blue and black label. Sterling and the Dead Wax, uh, nothing else interesting, but yeah, just some very cool synthy fusiony rock kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if I said this is from 77, so you know, sort of that late 70s synthy fusion rock stuff. If you like that stuff, you'll probably like this. It's good. Definitely one to to look out for. So Stomu Yamash does go to their second and last album. Uh, really good, staying in the collection. I really enjoyed this one a lot. Okay, moving on. Uh, now we're talking about a band uh, release from this year. This is High As A Kite with Silent Treatment. Uh, as I said, this year, 20, released in 2014. This is their first LP, I believe. They are more along the lines of sort of a female-led synth pop, not synth pop, synth, uh, very ambient sounding synthy very uh, heavenly sounding i guess you could say big sounding very very open and just sort of gives you the feeling that you're in this different kind of heavenly kind of world 
uh, very beautiful vocals on here. Uh, sort of m uh, a more electronic version of of Bon Iver, I guess you could say. Kind of, kind of those kind of lush, vocally sounding pieces that that it's not really about what the lyrics are, but sort of how they're delivered, uh, which is really cool for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm definitely more in favor of the actual music itself rather than lyrics when it comes to music. So uh, when, when, when the music, when the lyrics are delivered at, in a musical way, uh, it really helps, I think. The disappointing thing about this is this is on Propeller Records and the pressing is not good on this at all. It's very noisy, uh, unfortunately, so can't really recommend this on vinyl. Uh, but, but if you're into those kind of things that I mentioned, uh, check it out because it's a really beautiful sounding album and uh, I do enjoy listening to this. So mostly probably listen to it on the down. I think there's a download included in here. Yeah, I did see a download card in there. Here is a printed uh, inner sleeve. That's pretty nice. Here is the record itself? It it looks good. You know, look just looking at it. There's no orange peel. It's flat, uh, but just as I said, it's noisy, unfortunately. So disappointing in that aspect. But a, a really cool album. So if you like, you know, Bon Iver and stuff like that, check this one out. Really cool band. Okay, next thing we have is an album from Peter Cetera, actually, which is something I didn't think I would like, but this is Solitude Standing from 1986. Very well-known album for the tracks Glory of Love and Next Time I Fall. Uh, and those those tracks kind of sell this album short, I think. They're the, the deep tracks on this album, the other, the other tracks on here are a lot more heavier and a lot more synthier and a lot a lot more percussive and uh, just definitely more interesting musically uh, it's it's kind of disappointing that the songs that were kind of mushy love songs are the ones that were hits and there's there's a lot more interesting musically challenging uh, musically interesting songs on here um, so I actually ended up really enjoying this a lot a lot more than I thought I would insert here with photo and some lyrics on it. Yeah, that one's on the Warner Brothers label. Uh, so yeah, it is very much an 80s album. It's very heavily produced, very, very tight, uh, very clean sounding. If you like synthy kind of 80s pop kind of things, uh, give this one a shot. You know, it's one you see in thrift stores and dollar bins and stuff. And I found it quite interesting, and I'm actually going to be keeping this in the collection. I liked it enough to keep it. So, uh, Peter Cetera, Solitude Standing, recommended if you can find it for a buck or less. Moving into the 90s here with the hip-hop debut album from Outkast from Atlanta. This is Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music from 1994. As I said, this is their debut album. They, they sort of broke ground for Southern hip hop in general. At the time, uh, West Coast hip hop was blowing up and we were starting to see this push back towards East Coast hip hop, uh, but just was not there quite yet. Uh, but there was definitely a little bit of a pushback and right before we got into the, the really heated East Coast, West Coast battles. But these guys kind of put it on the map for Southern hip hop and really uh, change what people thought of southern hip-hop you know first they thought it was just all booty shaking music and you know two live crew and stuff like that uh, but these guys prove that there's more to southern hip-hop than that and this is uh, an awesome debut album this is the record store day reissue from this year 2014 and it's pretty much exactly done as the original vinyl pressing of this album Meaning there are, I believe, three tracks missing on here. Unfortunately, one of them, one of them is probably my favorite track on the album. Still a great album, nonetheless. You know, you got Get Up, Get Out, Get Something on here, Player's Ball, Call of the Wild, title track, Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music. Replicated the original LaFace label from the 90s there. Um, I actually have some 12-inch singles from this album that are actually from 94 and they look exactly like this. So uh, a really nice, well done reissue, uh, record store day kind of thing, and a good album, and an album that sort of put put Southern hip hop on the map and proved that it's more than just two live crew type stuff. 
So obviously this one's staying in the collection. I bought it because it's an album I love, and uh, that's basically it. I just wanted to have it on vinyl. All right, next thing we have to talk about is the ninth studio album from Eric Anderson. This is titled Blue River from 1972. Eric Anderson started out as pretty much a straightforward folk singer, uh, but at this point he was moving on towards more of a singer-songwriter kind of sound along the lines of, of James Taylor and Jackson Brown and that, that kind of thing. Uh, they're all kind of in the same wheelhouse. This is a very uh, beautifully made and recorded album. I really, I really enjoyed this a lot. Uh, well recorded, uh, very tender, loving songs that have a lot of emotion to them and I really, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, Joni Mitchell sings on here on Blue River keeping with the blue theme the insert here is uh blue i, I really like the artwork and the, the you know sort of line art drawing package and the the album itself has got a nice texture to it really fits the feel of the album well i think it's it's kind of a little bit homemade that's on the columbia orange and black orange red and black label uh so that that's Eric Anderson's Blue River. Uh, definitely one to check out if you if you like those kind of you know singer songwriter early to mid '70s albums. Uh, this one fits right in with with those really well, and I think it's really well. Uh, some great songs and really well recorded, and uh, it works really well. I think so. Definitely can feel the emotion in this album, and I, I appreciate that. So uh, that one's staying in the collection. Okay, next thing we have here is uh, another sort of folky singer songwriter -y kind of thing. This is from Buffy St. Marie, I'm Gonna Be a Country Girl Again from 1968. She, this is an album she recorded in Nashville going for definitely a very strong country sound. This has a very, a very strong sort of late 60s country sound to it. Uh, also features uh, Grady Martin is on here on guitar. Um, as well as Floyd Kramer on piano. So it, it, it has that sort of very traditional country sound to it. And in the end, I decided not to keep this album. She has a sort of a, 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 a vibrato sort of sound to her voice at times that really grates on me. It just didn't really connect with me that well. It, so, it sounds very dated to me. And just uh, didn't didn't really appreciate this that much, uh, so unfortunately this one's not staying in the collection on Vanguard Records. And there's there's nice uh, gold labels that I love. So yeah, Buffy Saint Marie. I'm gonna be a country girl again. Not not something for me. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. So this one is uh, the first one so far that's not gonna be making it in the collection. All right, next thing we have to talk about is sort of a local private press. I guess you could call it. This is on ARA Records from Gainesville, Florida, where I live now. And this is Sounds of Florida Birds. This is ARA release number five, and it's just a whole bunch of field recordings of Florida birds. There's 86 different bird recordings on here. And, and I enjoyed listening to this and hearing, hearing the different bird calls, and I definitely heard a lot that I recognized and didn't know exactly what they sounded like or what bird they were coming from. So it was really cool to hear this, and I really enjoyed this a lot, so that was kind of cool. I may end up trying to put this up on, on uh, YouTube here at some point if I can collect photos of all the different birds that are on here and sort of put a video together. I think that would kind of be kind of neat. And just kind of a generic green label there. And they have the birds separated. Marsh wrens through vireos, wood warblers, blackbirds and finches, hawks through terns, doves through woodpeckers and flycatchers through Carolina wren. So they kind of organize the sounds by by type of birds. Yeah, just really high quality recordings and I I enjoyed having this. So I'm going to keep this. It's very relaxing just to turn the lights out and close my eyes and listen to the birds. Okay, the next thing we have to talk about is uh, another 2014 Record Store Day issue here. This is the Flaming Lips Record Store Day issue of Seven Skies H3. These, This is a condensed version of a 24-hour song they made in 2011. It was released in a human skull. There were only 13 copies made. 
and they were $5,000 each. So it was kind of similar thing to the blood vinyl thing they did. Extremely limited. Uh, not very many people got to actually, you know, own this. So for Record Store Day, they released a this, this condensed version of just portions of the track. Very metallic sleeve in here. It goes along with the very metallic cover. And then sort of this milky, clear vinyl. So yeah, that's... Flaming Lips, Seven Skies, H3, Record Store Day reissue sort of thing. Uh, just an interesting piece to have, not something that's a must-have, just a cool addition to the Flaming Lips collection. And the last album we have to talk about today is the third album from Jim Croce, You Don't Mess Around With Jim, probably his most well-known album. Uh, features, of course, the title track on here, Time in a Bottle, Rapid Roy, uh, what else is on here, Photographs and Memories... Definitely a well-known, well-loved album from him. Not too much on here I hadn't heard before. A skate full with lyrics. And photo on the back there. ABC Dunhill Inner Sleeve. Nice ABC Records label. So yeah, it's Jim Croce. I mean, there's not much needs to be said. I don't think there's anybody on the face of the earth that hasn't heard Jim Croce before. If you like Jim Croce, you like him. If you don't, you don't. I I like him okay. I, I think this is a nice album to have, and I'm going to be keeping this one in the collection. You know, and I enjoy listening to his music from time to time. So that is the latest episode of The Vinyl Survivor. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments down below on any of these albums or questions if you have any on any of them always appreciate the interaction if you're not already subscribed please subscribe i do I try to get at least one of these up a week and do a lot of other things here on the channel that you might be interested in vinyl wise and otherwise so thank you for that thanks for watching see y'all again real soon have a great week cheers